Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This was one of those cases where I was out of my comfort zone. As you can see that this is a very deep seated eye with a prominent brow and it was the left eye. Also it had pseudo exfoliation with a non dilating pupil and a peripheral corneal opacity. So this was a recipe for many complications. So we begin by making one side port and we are now injecting 1.4% sodium hyaluronate. After making the second side port, we begin the manual dilatation of the pupil. The manual stretching is done with two Y instruments and as you can see as we are stretching them 180 degrees apart, you can actually see the stretch at the sphincter pupillae muscle. So I augment this dilatation with some viscoelastic substance and I am not satisfied with the amount of dilatation that I have so I decide to go in with the iris hooks placement. You'll notice that I'm making four side port incisions in a posterior limbal location and I'm not making a complete entry with my side port knife or partial entry roughly 0.75 to 0.8 millimeters. So once the hook has been rotated in an adequate manner in which it engages the pupil margin, I am pushing the rubber stopper towards the limbus to lock the hook in place and to achieve a stretching in that zone. We repeat that for all four hooks. So we've now achieved a large square sized opening which is adequate for the phaco emulsification process. <laughs> So I am aspirating all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber so that I can stain the anterior capsule. I initiate the capsular axis with a 26 gauge bent cystitome and then complete this with the utrata forceps. Generally in a case where you have pseudo exfoliation and a hard nucleus, you want to get a larger capsular axis size somewhere close to 6 millimeters. By the time I complete this capsular axis, I wasn't really satisfied with the diameter of the capsular axis that I had achieved, so I decided to enlarge it slightly. Hydro dissection is completed and nucleus rotation is achieved very gently so as not to exert any extra pressure on the weakened zonules in pseudo exfoliation. Technique of choice in a nuclear practice for pseudo exfoliation cases is a direct chop. As you can see here, I inserted the phaco tip bevel down and I failed to achieve the chop in the first instance, so I rotate the nucleus by 180 degrees and try from the other place. I lose hold of the nucleus once again and I try a third time. So I'm able to achieve a chop in this instance and immediately I notice that the chop is unequal and one fragment is much larger than the other. Generally friends you will notice that this kind of chopping occurs when there is a posterior plate of the nucleus. Here again I achieved a partial chop, I could not penetrate the posterior plate. In this instance again I begin rotation and start or attempt a chop from another place. The posterior nuclear plate is now much more defined and I decide that since those small fragments of the nucleus are not prolapsing out, I'll try and break the posterior nucleus plate. And I've achieved success in this endeavor. I have managed to break the posterior plate. So 
so i am emulsifying the partially broken posterior nuclear plate because uh, it prevents the other nucleus fragments from prolapsing out of the bag so once the nuclear plate is out of the way the nuclear fragments will come out of the capsule bag in a much easier fashion so that's the second part of the posterior nuclear plate which i have now finally emulsified and then i go forward with the fragmentation and emulsification of the individual nucleus pieces i've tried not to edit out too much of the emulsification process as i wanted to highlight how the nucleus was handled in such a case you will notice that i'm being a little over cautious and i'm emulsifying the nuclear fragments really very slowly difference i'm a right-handed surgeon who's used to sitting superiorly when he's operating his cases and this case has numerous factors which has put me out of my comfort zone firstly this is the left eye which is a very deep seated eye and has a prominent brow and a very large nose so i have to change my position to a superior temporal position secondly this patient had a non dilating pupil as is very often seen in pseudo exfoliation cases also the nucleus was a grade 4 plus cataract and as you can see that i had to make four extra incisions when i was inserting the iris hooks you could very well say that i could have used a pupil expansion device such as the b hex ring that was devised by dr sevin bhattacharji or the malugen ring difference i don't have any experience with those devices and uh, my training initially had been only with the iris hooks and i'd like to very soon begin using those devices <laughs> So now that most of the nucleus is out we go ahead with the irrigation aspiration my preferred technique always is the bimanual irrigation aspiration for removing the cortex Pseudo exfoliation cases are very prone to zonular dialysis because of the weakened zonules so we should be very careful that when we are aspirating the cortex we should not grasp the capsular edge or part of the capsular bag we are now reinflating the bag with sodium hyaluronate and preparing for iol implantation the wide dialer i nudge the iol into the bag and once i'm satisfied that the iol is inside the bag i go ahead with the removal of the iris hooks Once all the iris hooks are out, I go ahead with aspiration of the viscoelastic substance. You'll notice that I haven't gone behind the optic of the iol. That's because the pupil has already come down. It has meiosed slightly, and because I don't have clear visualization of the capsular excess edge, I do not want to risk going behind the iol optic at this stage for the fear of causing a zonular dialysis. This concludes the case difference and thanks for watching if you have any questions i'll take them in the comment section below